Alrighty, so uh, we've got one of those pieces out of the fall board. I'm going to flip this over and we'll get the next piece. Alright, um, have here the fall board. We're continuing on with it. So I have another piece, the other end piece to take off of it, you see here. So let's get it off of here. on the Kanabi rack are, it's pretty simple um, we just have two screws holding holding this folding piece onto the base piece here so we'll get these screws out and I don't have to get a skinny screwdriver for that so let me grab on that and uh, we'll, we'll get this out Looks like at some point someone did a uh, uh, lost the. Uh, not quite sure how this happened. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'll show you the screw here to get it out. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pull this out of here. Hard to get to. Quite wrong, considering where it's going. But this is, you know, this will be a, an area I'll address as far as a repair goes. It's not really a repair, but put the proper, proper screw in place. This is, it's like they put a machine screw in, and that's really why it's difficult to take out. See here, a machine screw. It's not the proper screw for that, but I'll I'll take care of that when uh, when the time's right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. But the music racks, I really like the music racks on these pianos. They're real straightforward. pieces here for the music rack. And that's all there is on this particular piano. Let me drop these in here and label this bag. Okay. 
Alrighty, let's do the pedal wire. And this is the pedal wire assembly here. And it has, I like this, uh, a lot of your more uh, well-made pianos will have a mechanism that helps ensure that the pedal wire doesn't shift or move or rock, you know, over time from the use um, of, your, you know, with your feet pushing against the pedals. And uh, this is something that now has pretty heavy uh, dials or uh, pedal wire rods. I'll, if I come across another set in the shop here, I'll show you the difference. Um, I don't see any right off I can put my hand on, but the diameter of the Kanabis are considerably bigger than most of the others. So, in any case, let's get started here. These just pull out. And these are, um, in some cases you can see some markings, but they're all the same length, which... Uh, Makes it pretty straightforward putting them back. Some manufacturers will mark those one, two, and three. Let's see if I can find a proper bit for the screwdriver. Alright, so four screws to get that out. Aside from the dust, uh, you see on the inside of here you've got a couple of, uh, there should be three. Um, oh, here's a third that decided to stay behind. So you have three uh, pieces of felt to uh, just keep the uh, pedal eye from being noisy when it's in use. Um, you've got a spring for the center pedal, a sustenuto. And that's pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of different companies have different setups for those pedal eye bottoms, just depending on how they want to make them. Um, let's get a baggie for that. And I'm just drop the rods in the box I have here. these four screws here. Also, I'll take the felt off. I will put new felt on, but I'm going to pull this felt off here. See here? And what I'll do is I'll use it as a guide to cut the new felt when I get to that point at the end. Alright, so uh, we'll go ahead and set this in the box. And uh, we'll get these pedals off. Now, on the pedals, you can see here, and most companies use this style setup with the hold this up so you can see it with the dials on the pedals. Uh, Steinway has a system that's a little different. I'm going to be rebuilding a, a Model A coming up here soon, and I'll I'll show you how their setup is. But they use uh, they don't use wood on theirs, and there are a few manufacturers that don't. So I'm going to pull these out. Yes. Gentle pull on it, it'll come right out. But that's basically what you have there on the pedal. That's the bottom. So it's basically it there. So I'm going to pull these out. We'll put these in the bag of two. Now there's one more 
part to the pedal I got that I'll pull off. That's the guide for the rods. A couple of screws here. Now sometimes these, I don't know what the case for this one will be, but sometimes these will be glued in place and they'll have screws as well. We'll see on this one. I'm beginning to think this one's glued in place. And if that's the case, I mean, it's no big deal. Yeah. So we'll leave it on. It's glued in place. So we'll leave it on. And uh, I'll just need to take extra care when I come around it to sand. So uh, that takes care of the pedal wire on the... Uh, on the canal. All right, I'll drop these screws in. Close this bag up. And the last piece on this piano will be the lid. So let's get the lid up here and uh, we will get it taken apart. Alright, before I forget, what I want to do is I want to show you um, I didn't put the lid on when I set the piano up, so there's some of the lid hardware. The cabinet has hinges. Most of you guys see this. These are the hinges that go on the cabinet itself. And they flip this around. They fit into these. One here and one here. And then you have Then you have a pin you have a pin that goes through to secure that so the lid can open and close without falling. So all of that will get polished and look like me when uh, when we get to that point now, what I'm going to start with is, and this will take a few minutes, a couple of minutes, I'm going to start with pulling, separating the folding part from the large piece. That way it can sit on the, my uh, table a little bit better. So uh, let's just get started with that. And there are about, uh, about 50 screws here, I think it is. Between 40 and 50, it just depends on the hand. So, that's why this process is a little bit longer than the uh, rest of them. Some of these long hinges are, depending on the manufacturers, uh, they use different style and even uh, color hinges. Some use nickel. Um, don't recall if I've seen a Kanabi with nickel hinges. 
there are some manufacturers that will use uh, nickel or have a chrome look. And But it's always nice to find these hinges where it's not really heat up or bent up. And you can usually polish these, polish these hinges out to really look good after they're um, after you put the piano back together. Leaves a nice leaves a nice look while keeping the original parts. So let's see if we can get these screws out of here. One thing, one other thing I guess I could mention, uh, is this piano has its original finish from, uh, I have to look the date back up, but I'm thinking this one is a 1923 or 24, somewhere in there. And I always love to find pianos with their original finish and parts. Um, and when they're in good work, working order with those original parts, it usually means that, uh, the owners really cared about the piano and took care of it. So we're going to separate this now. Makes it a little easier for me to handle. And uh, I'll get this other piece of hinge off in a second. But I'm going to show you the back side of this. So we have three pieces of hardware on the back. We've got these two pieces I've already showed you, one here and here. And then the other part of the lid catch, which uh, right here, which the, this is the male piece here, female piece goes on the case and that, that just um, allows the lid to sit in place and not move when traveling and uh, when you close it, it's a nice, good, secure close and uh, all pianos don't have that, but it just depends on what the maker had in mind when they were building the piano. So I want to pull that right now, the lid catch piece. I'm going to bag that up and also the um, hinges here on the lid for the goes to the case. And just with the more custom nature of these older instruments, one thing I like about them a little bit, sometimes, oftentimes you'll find that these um, parts, when they're fitted at the factory, find writing on the back of them. And uh, this little symbol here, or two, should be engraved on the cabinet. And if not, I'm going to put it on there because usually what happens is when you put it back together, they're fitted at the factory per piano, and usually the hinges won't go but in one place. And it'll, you know, it'll just make the fit when putting the piano back together a little easier. So I'm going to mark this with a two as well here. Just take my screwdriver and scribe it into the wood here under the hinge. It'll be where the hinge goes and covers it up. So you can see here, I get this for you. I did a little scribe mark with a two to match the, the hinge there that I just took off. Alright, so I'll get this other piece off here. Thank you. 
Alrighty, I'm gonna set this lid off to the side now. Come back and get that other, you notice the other side of the continuous hinge. Get that look closer. The other side of the continuous hinge is still on there. I'll check that off a little bit later. And uh, bag this up. And then we'll work on the folding piece of lid. Alright, on this piece, there's only, really only other, one other uh, piece to come off of this and that. We call the log, which is this piece here, you see the screw for it. And what the function of that is, is to keep this piece from warping. So, uh, go ahead and remove the screws for it. It has uh, six screws. We'll take those out. Oops. Again, something here that I always like to see in an all original instrument, these, uh, these dress pieces on the screws. And sometimes you can find, there are a couple of suppliers I can get pieces like this. It's a neat little dress piece that goes with this screw so that uh, it's a nice look in the you know, so it uh, won't mess up the paint when you uh, tighten the screw. So you really want those pieces to be secure. And many times you have to be real careful when reassembling that you don't uh, wrinkle the paint by tightening the, screw down, tightening the screw down too much. So those pieces help prevent that. All right, so that's that takes care of the log. Label this one. care of that piece. And that, that should do it. Now under here you can find what this panel looked like new because this paint was unaffected from over the years. So let me see if I can hold that up close to the camera. It's real hard to see. I don't think we're going to be able to be hard to see that on the camera because there's not enough light. But I'll see if I can take a picture or two of that. So just check out the uh, the listing for this piano on beaverspiano.com. Um, I have a, a detail of this piano and the steps and all the things that are going into getting this, this one done. So um, just a couple quick things. If you want to come in on YouTube, this uh, video will be posted on YouTube, uh, youtube.com, uh, Beavers Piano TV. Also, um, if you have a Twitter account, twitter.com, at Beavers Piano. So uh, just check one of those spots out and you'll see details on this piano. I'll write up a little bit, make some comments on the restoration as it goes. Now I'll be posting some more uh, videos of the teardown on this piano uh, when it comes to removing the strings and the plate. Um, and also when we get into doing the actual work on the piano. So just follow along and, uh, and um, comment back on it as you uh, may have some questions or comments. I'd be glad to hear those. And uh, let's see what happens. Thanks.